All right, welcome back to another electromechanical pinball repair video. This today we're going to be looking at 1953 Williams Silver Skates. There's only about like two videos of this on the internet, and it's a very rare machine. I I wouldn't say it's the best playing game, but it's definitely got a lot more for its vintage than most other games from the early 50s. It's got flippers that are facing the same direction. It's got some trap holes, but not too many. It's got five, and your main goal is to get all five of your balls to drain in the trap holes instead of between the flippers or on the sides of the flippers. And it has really good nudging potential right at the bottom of the field where you're able to nudge it back and forth to save it for, from some uh, drains. I've got four free games left on it, so I'll play at least one of them to kind of show the gameplay of it. Hit the start button. All the balls and the ball release drop through the holes. And on this game, no matter which flipper button you hit, both the flippers go, and you can't hold the flippers up. They're both just on a linkage with a very small looking coil. It gives it enough power to kick the ball, and that's about it. So they were called impulse flippers early in the, the, uh, the early days. And which is weird because Gottlieb had gone away from the impulse flippers before Williams did. There was already the technology to do individual flippers, but Williams stuck with it. So not a, for, for once kind of a Williams uh, loss on their part. Usually it's uh, Gottlieb that does the uh, not great decisions, but I just got a brand new back door on there. I made a back door out of some wood I grabbed from Menards. So, thankfully the bells are not that loud. You just have a small bell on the 10,000s unit, and you have a bigger bell to go, to go when you get 100,000s or goals in this game. Every time you hit an advanced puck bumper on top, it advances the puck closer to the goal on the back glass. In the little ice blue, you can kind of see it. Every time it finishes, the goal light lights up, and you're given, like that, one goal. I'm actually doing pretty all right. Most of your points are scored in the trap holes, because everything on the field is worth 50,000, besides the single red bumper bits, which are only 10,000. And the only things worth more are getting the goal dead center. Ooh, just straight over it. Nope, missed it. All right, well, the free, first free game is at 4,800,000, so if I can get goal right there, that sets me right up for one. If I can get a couple more points here, the trap hole would set me over. Oop, goal. We're at 13 goals scored. We already got a free game on goals. 14 goals. The free game on that. Oh, just missed. Oh, I got the replay too. So I got the replay for 4,800,000 because my final score is 4,870,000. And then the goal scored comes up in the little uh, meter right there. So I got 14 goals. Replays are at 12, 16, and 25 goals. Mm, I'll try one more game. These games go by so quick, I don't mind playing a second one. I do like the little auto flippers on this machine. I wish more like the mechanical games had them. Well, I think looking on Pinball Database says there were only five ever have these little auto flippers. It falls in the little divot and kicks them out. Let's see, that's good. I always notice A and C are either A and C or D usually seems to be the hardest ones to get. D usually isn't that hard, but if you get B early on, then you're kind of screwed. You really want to land D first. Oh, damn. Yeah, D for damn, I suppose. Goal scored. Every time you hear that extra bell go off, that's the uh, puck getting to the end and scoring a goal. 
or the 100,000th unit going up. Either one. Oh, still had a chance for a free game, except for uh, that happening. Okay, I got another 500,000. This would be a good game on points if we get another center goal way up there. Oop. Nope. Nudge it the wrong way. I'll try one more that time. It was 3,720,000. This game actually maxes out. I'll wait for the balls to fall. It's really loud on this one. This game actually maxes out at 7,500,000. The unit physically does not count up further than 7,500,000. Even though there's banners that have silkscreen numbers on the back end for... 8 million and 9 million. There's not even sockets back there for it because the unit didn't count up that high. They'll never line up. Your unit maxes out at 7.5. So, kind of unfortunate there, but. Oh, wow, that was a whole lot of nothing hit up there for such a great shot back up to the top. I have noticed with these impulse flippers, they don't. They don't like hitting the ball out to the side like that. They're not terribly powerful in that aspect. But they're really good at hitting the ball straight. You gotta at least have a little momentum going into them if you wanna make those long shots. Because if you just sit the ball right on the flipper, it usually isn't that strong. And I can at least say for certainty that's how the game is made because I've cleaned everything potentially possible. And they're very free to move. It's just. That's a goal. And we already have penalty box, so we're not able to get a free game on, on trap holes this game, unfortunately. The way the holes work is A, B, C, and D award a free game. And they also light the out of the lane for special, which aren't that great, considering you need your first four balls to uh, get in them and then bring your last ball through the out lane. But what's more fun is getting all of them, which is way more difficult. I'd love to get it on video, but if I fail on this game, I'll just go to, uh... Actually, I'll just be quiet on this game. That way, if anyone's fixing it, they can listen to certain things happening at certain times. I just realized, I forgot to mention in the very first video where I won a free game on points and I won a free game on goals. The game, this game actually doesn't have a knocker in it. It, it, it just didn't come from the factory with a knocker. I don't know if, because they had to have been invented. Gottlieb, my pinwheel in my kitchen from 1953 as well, also has a knocker. So I don't know why they didn't implement a knocker in this game. It really, really kind of baffles me, but... You know, you could very easily add a knocker by just adding a switch below the credit reel and wire in a knocker if you really wanted to. I'm not a fan of keeping things original as much as the next guy, but, I mean, it's a knocker. I mean, come on. Nobody would ever have thought this game didn't have a knocker in it, so... I 
I just want to get the trap holes filled so I can show it off. Whoa, that was a million point shot right there, up and down the goal. Okay, well, that one's at least staying in the video now. That was, that was very nice. You can't really aim for that, especially if it's not, especially if you have any other balls in any of the holes in the middle. You can aim for the other ones, though, which is nice. You can actually aim to go straight up those light on A or light on B lanes, which are very nice. There. Yes, good. I always like giving a little nudge when it bounces off those rubbers to try and get it in the holes. End on that side on the left. Okay, A. Give me A. Come on. Or a penalty box at this rate, and I've got them all. I wouldn't mind either one. Other than keep it on that side. Might get kind of lucky. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, up the goal. And down the goal. That's 12 for a free game. But you didn't hear the knocker, because there's not a knocker in there. Wow! It snuck underneath the thing. Okay. Yeah, those were not the best at keeping the balls in. Oh! Free game! That's special. Alright, A, B, C, and D are covered, and I've got the out lanes lit for my last ball. Here we are. If I can get penalty box, this is one of the very first extra balls in pinball. And I'm at 5,670,000. Holy moly. If I can go down the goal in the middle, amazing. Oh, is that it? Oh, that's it. That's it. Six million. Okay, keep it alive. Oh, come on. Up the goal. I've got 19 goals. Holy moly. 20. 21. There's a free game at 25 I've never gotten. Oh, you're kidding me. Very easy to tilt this one, so I'm really trying not to. No! And I was just 100,000 away from maxing it out. 7,400,000. And no 10,000s. I scored four free games on points at 4, 8, 5, 5, 6 million, and 6, 5. That's four free games on points. And I scored two free games on the goals being... 12 and 16, I didn't get 25, I got 22 goals scored. And then an 8th, or a 7th free game on uh, A through D. And I didn't even go down an out lane for the special. Uh, well, since this game doesn't know when game over is, because there's no there's no game over really, it's, it's not able to see the balls that are in the trough, so it doesn't know when you played all five. Uh, let me show you. Let me back him up really quick. I'll take the coin door off. Nice, uh, nice coin door with a brand new lock on it. Let me show you what happens if you're able to. If I was, if I was more skilled, I suppose, and my final ball fell into penalty box, what would have ensued? Because it's not even over after you hit it. Currently, I'm just sitting on my happy days pinball machine, so I'll slide him out of the way. There we go. Nice original plate blast. A little chunk missing off the corner as usual. 
All right, so if my last ball were to have landed in penalty box, then ball in penalty box returns when A, B, C, D are made. So regardless of whether this is the first or last hole gotten, gives you 500,000 and just drops that. That's on a separate coil than the rest of them. So that drops out. You get probably one of the very first extra balls in pinball where you actually get a ball back to shoot again. And then extra special lights between the flippers for making ABCD and penalty box lights center bottom channel for five. Oh shit. I just printed this out. I must have, I must have not, I'll have to write that in. I just printed out a brand new instruction card. I must have not formatted that to sit in the thing. That sucks. It's five replays. So currently I'm at nine. I'll roll over it and uh, you watch him. 14, watch him again. 19, that's five free games. And every time you hit advance puck, your puck advances. Yeah, unfortunately a paint flew off the end, but the final advance brings it to the goal and changes your goal score. 24. So the final goal, you can watch 25 go up here. And since that's the final goal for the replay, that goal score or the replay goes to 20. Goals 25, 20. And despite getting the 500,000 from the penalty box, my score will not increase more than 7,500. The, the, the 10,000 just increased because they're on they're on their own unit. So 10,000s are just loop constantly. But anyways, that's Silver Skates. What a beautiful game. Like I said, not the most fun player around, but definitely can get very excited when oh, the more balls you get in the holes because you almost always will feel like it's your own fault, especially if you don't save it between the flippers. But a little less so when it's out here. But still, just a great game. Let me hit the... Uh, yeah, and if you drain your final... Your final shot at the extra special down the middle. If you drain that in the penalty box, it does nothing. It says ball in penalty box second time, but retained ball and does not score. So once all once they're all lit, then you're really just going for extra special. Let me uh let me hit the start button. And uh with, uh, I gotta hit something. 50,000 turns off the ball release coil. Let me show you under on the other side of the play field here. Actually, we can't even show you the underside of the play field because this is before a uh, prop bar. So, I gotta pull the whole thing towards me and then lean it against the back box because at least, at least this has sides to do that but take notes valleys of the 80s where you just stop having wood here for five seconds make me drop a damn play field they were doing this back in the early 50s you could just put wood here to prop the damn game up <sighs> Fuck idiots anyways so looking inside you've got flipper button mounted flippers that do the flipper relay Every time you flip them, and his only real job is to be an extra end of stroke switch. So when you release the button, you're able to hit the button again. And these are the little itty bitty quick impulse flippers. Crazy. You got your little end of stroke switch right here to. I'm assuming energize that flipper relay and lock him in, which that flipper relay breaks the power of the flippers. Anyways, you got your big old chunky ball release coil. You've got your separate penalty box release. This just releases the penalty box. And then you have your big coil to release all of the uh, 
A, B, C, and D holes here. Got a little trip bank here. I think my relays are labeled, so let me let me get over to this side so you guys can see. Yeah, top you have release trip, penalty, A through D, no coil, or yeah, A through D trip, no coil. So this is just the no, no coil one that goes when A through D are made. So, and then D, C, B, A, and uh, game and tilt. That's what you're looking at over there. Big old trip bank coil. It's actually, it's actually really small. Look how thin he is. Like a skinny boy. And you got your itty bitty little score motor play field mountain because you have uh, nothing on the bottom board essentially you have basically nothing there you've got your tilt you've got the ball the turn you have your switches for your start button your ball roll tilt and uh this plug jack right here is not really important his meaning is derived from this meter jack adjustment which his different positions you plug him in just changes when the play meter operates like only on coin drop or only when the coin drop or the replay button is pushed or you know like any of the coin meters are even still good in these vintages mine's at 2863 wow it's still good i just hit it and it's 2864 yeah i guess my Meter is still good, speak of the devil. Other than that, you also have the very rare uh, actual cutoff switch to turn the power off to the game. And you have this little guy. He's actually labeled, I didn't even notice. Replay knockoff uh, switch. Yeah, I, know he's, I knew he was the knockoff switch. So I forget, let me just tell you how these are adjusted. The bottom one closes. Uh, yeah, the bottom one closes. Let me get you zoomed in here. Bottom one closes, and then the upper one goes from a break and then makes the very top one. He breaks the lower switch and he makes the top switch. And this is your knockoff switch. So all those 20 free games I just scored, I just knocked them off. So now I'm at zero. And that was for the gambling reasons. Woohoo. Otherwise, you've got your uh, puck unit. Change which position the puck is in. All to just have one wire at the bottom. I'm assuming score your goal for you once the puck unit is advanced all the way with this outer switch here. And you have your bumpers that have the weird tungsten or whatever the heck it's called. These little rings in between them, where the switch hits the outer ring and scores your uh, scores your points. I do love these these uh, general illumination sockets. You can actually pull them out, change the bulb from underneath, and put them back in. You know, if you're not using LEDs that are whiter than your original bulbs, but these are super neat. I had to override some of the GI, like that one right there, that one over there, just to solder repair them but otherwise relays over here go in the order of flipper relay bumper relay let me start a game actually so you guys can see what they do let me put my coin through the prong works for me let me score fifty thousand so it stops buzzing there we go so now we've got bumper relay that does the pop bumpers and the puck advance one. We've got right auto flipper, which locks itself in and fires your right auto. You've got left auto, and you'll never guess what that does. Same thing with the left auto flipper. You've got your release relay, which just does the penalty box. Um, and it does yeah it does the uh, penalty uh trip right there 
You've also got your puck relay, which shows your 50,000 points also up here and does a puck advance for you. The, the puck relay being what actuates when the uh, green puck advance bumpers get hit. Got your special relay, which is actually the extra special relay, because I just heard five. Jesus Christ. What the hell happened? Oh, did I tilt the game? Holy fuck. I just saw a spark. It just scared me. I think it was just my tilt. Yeah. I just tilted it. I don't know why. I was sh I'm shaking it, sitting up against it, but, uh... Other than that, you got your 500,000 relay. Probably pulses when you get the trap holes or the center goal. 50,000 relay. You got your start relay and your lock relay. Your lock, even when it's unlocked, still, I think, gives you power to the game. Yeah, your, your back, back bar slides are still on. It just, that's what drops out when you tilt the game. Then your start relay does everything. So, yep, that's under the play field for you. I'll uh, pull them out a little ways, and you can see all the happenings. Just gonna walk them up a little bit. Don't slide that easy. Anyways, one of the tea, tea nuts is coming off of the back of them, so we gotta be really careful sliding out. But he is going to storage today, so that's why he's getting a video on it. He, that was one of the last games I'll, he'll be playing on for who uh, knows how long. Oh, good, my video's still recording. I had to buy new storage for this darn phone that I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. It does disgust me. Anyways. Lastly, I've got the back box where there's a very critical note about the goal scoring unit that I would like to make aware of. Because uh and how to get the back glass out of this thing because it sucks. I added that and a little itty bitty screw at the bottom. I don't even know if I have to unscrew this for sure to get the, the back out, but I'm just going to. Yeah, but getting the glass out, unfortunately, I lost a little more back glass paint than I initially had, even though I sealed it as well. It just sucked because I took it out incorrectly. Basically, in order to get the back glass out of this, the original procedure is to pull this guy, and that unlocks this upper panel all the way here. You've got a screw here, screw here. The whole front wood molding comes off with this upper panel, and then you're supposed to slide the back glass up, and I just didn't agree with that, so... In order to get this back board out, you have to take out these wooden boards here and here that aren't even there anymore. They're just little guys, they just sit here, they don't do anything. And then you also have to take out the four screws here, here, and then the same on the opposite side to remove that back panel. And if you have these bolts in, it's really hard to get the back panel out over these bolts. And it's just a huge pain. So, Initially, when for some reason my 4 million light burned out, even though it was LED, I noticed all these bulbs are taking like six and a half volts. I don't know if the transformer was just made funny, but uh, yeah, the uh, bulb burnt out there, even though it was an LED. And then in my act of trying to replace it, I just thought, hey, I'll slide the back glass up, not realizing that the, even though I already uh, glazed some triple thick over it i already had bits of pieces of foam and fuzz over here in this area in this area to 
you know, push the glass towards the front and not lean against the back and ruin more paint. Yeah, sliding it past that foam and fuzz uh, took more paint off. So that was really sad. That was really unfortunate. Um, but other than that, I have a pretty dirty unit here that was able to get cleaned up halfway nicely. This one too. They were both very bad. But shockingly, all of these coils that looked fried, even this one was still fine. I did my tried and true method of taking a, a, a plunger tip that wasn't working, shoving some, uh, shoving a zip tie, no, not a zip tie, uh, wire tie, a wire tie in the top, hammering it in the top with super glue, and then buzzing off the outside. And he works fine, you got your 10,000 unit which is also nice because you can take off, actually I'll show you. Yeah, if you take off this screw, I like the way they did these units. You just take off this one and then also this upper one, but this one was missing. Now you take off this outer screw and that's all it does is hold the unit in place. You can slide it out and do work on the inner part of the unit without having to take it all the way off. And it saves so much back box space being folded up against the back. Granted, I uh, had an impasse here because the... Uh... I don't know what broke there, but we got past it. We figured it out. It folds back, it still functions. I think the cores probably just got tangled over here on this side. But other than that, the only thing I really wanted to mention about the back box here Come on. Is the goal scored unit, this guy. He's not only a super complex version of a normal replay unit where he's got he's got two switches, one that uh, makes and uh, another that makes at the top. He's got a switch out here that makes as well. All this making and no knocker. I know one of them has to be for the bell. And then, uh, and then this switch in the middle. This is actually a make switch. I had this adjusted to break once the unit got to like 49 or whatever, because that's its max. But no, it's not a break switch. It's a, it's a make switch when the unit's at zero. And then it opens when the unit's at one. I did not know that. So with that adjusted incorrectly, if that switch is constantly made, then everything on the playfield scores a puck advance, like five puck advances, and it's horrible. So, yeah, that switch makes it zero, opens at one, just because this unit has, like, two zero positions. Like, this is zero, and then pulses once, still at zero, pulses another time, then it's at one, and then two. Yeah, so... Eh, goals unit's a little weird. And there you got your goal adjustment jack for 12 and 16. And the automatic replay is at 25. This is built into this wiper blade on the goal unit. I, thought, I, find, I find it so cool. They've got a little wiper blade going all throughout those contacts on this side of the goal unit. And then same for the replay. Got your switches on the outside and then your one to break the connection to the start button and one to break the connection to the uh, step up coil once you get to the end like a normal replay unit. Then lastly, you have your 100 thousandths unit. So if you're missing this piece of paper here, you've got 4 million, 4 million, 300,000, 4 million, 500,000. I've got my paper adjusted to 48, 55, 60, and 65 for the free games. And then there's an automatic free game at 75,000 once the unit has reached max position. So, then resets, those two switches make, pulses, those break, and then you also have a switch that opens, closes, and closes. There's your outside switch operates replay unit through fingers. Middle switch closes circuit to bell coil. Inside switch opens motor circuit on reset. There's your info, there's your fuses with... 10, 10, and 10. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about everything there is to say about Silver Skates. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, 
video. I mean, even the cabinet art on this thing is super freaking nice. Except for this side, they, uh, someone had a field day. It was like a grizzly bear got to it. The other side, this part of the cabinet looks great, but the back box got, uh, got vandalized by R.W. He put his name in the puck there. But this side of the cabinet looks splendid. It's phenomenal. But, uh, yeah. This is Silver Skates. Sorry this video took so long. He's going straight to storage. And... Hope you're around for the uh, for the next pinball repair, and hope uh, I hope somehow if you make it this far, you're just hopefully around for whenever this thing gets put on quarters, and uh, and in a location because this original mech rejects nickels or rejects pennies and accepts nickels. I burnished and shaved off so much metal in order to force it to accept quarters and reject. Uh, nickels instead so yeah that work was horrendous it took me probably four hours of different trial and error to get this thing to accept quarters but it takes quarters now so hopefully i'll be making some of those quarters back eventually shut up you ball release i love these little auto flippers I like most about them is the ball can make the switch without being fully in it so as soon as it makes that switch that relay kicks in and fires the flipper so very often times it'll still be bouncing around in that hole when that flipper fires and it won't actually be steady so that means that it fires at a completely different angle every single time and you're not just because that that ball went in A, I just fired it twice. There we go. The third time, it actually hit the A hole. <laughs> a hole. I'm losing it. Have a good night, everybody.